Hi, Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter, and here's another interview in my series of interviews with subscribers. Enjoy! Okay, hello everybody, and today I have Pat Jennings, one of my subscribers, for an interview, and uh, we're going to find out all about Pat and how many years she's been quilting, and she's going to show us some of her creations, and well, we're just going to talk, and we'll see what happens out of all of that. So, good morning, Pat. How are you? Good morning, Stephen. I, I am very good, and I was, I was so thankful that we are getting together on this. It, I was um excited about telling some others about the work I do well I'm excited to hear all about it and see some samples of your great work and everything like that but right off the bat can you tell us where you're located I am in Berea Kentucky which has been dubbed the arts and crafts capital of Kentucky I've been here for 41 years and I am delighted because the uh, atmosphere here of the college and the community support the work that I do. Well, that's great. It sounds it like is. a great environment for that. So it's nice to have an institution or organizations that support what we do as quilters as well, because, you know, some people who aren't quilters, they just look at us as a bunch of cut and pasters, and we're so much more than that, aren't we? So how long have you been quilting? When I first came to Berea, Kentucky, 41 years ago, I saw these beautiful quilts in the windows of the shops, and that really set me off. My mother had quilted early on, and I have a great aunt who quilted, but when I saw these quilts and how gorgeous they were, I just fell in love with that. I have always enjoyed painting and sewing, but had never made a quilt before I came here. So 41 years. Okay, so you've been doing it a long time. And I'm just going to interrupt our conversation for a minute. And are you sitting in a rocking chair? I am. Don't rock. <laughs> Okay. You're making me seasick. No, sorry. I'm sorry. Well, it's it's my nervousness that's making me rock. So I'm going to relax a bit. Okay. Yeah, just relax. Have a Okay. Pill. I don't know. Whatever. Don't worry about it. It's just that. Just don't rock. Okay. It out yeah. here and it's kind of like, oh, okay. We're at sea. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah. Okay. So you've kind of answered my next question. What, what, what was how you got started? Um, so I want to ask you then, and you also sort of answered this one too, but I'm going to ask you for a little bit more detail. Did anyone in your family influence you in either quilting or in sewing in general? Yes. I don't know how. Well, I do know how. I started stitching at nine years old. My mother had, we had uh, uh, lived on the farm and we got feed for the animals in feed sacks. And she would keep the ones that had the flowers and stuff on them for other things like clothing. But I got to embroider on the plain ones. And so I, when I learned that, she showed me how to do a stem stitch and away I went. And I fell in love with the colors, the skill, the just the needle going through the thread was so soothing to me and I enjoyed that and that's when I really started my love of stitching I see so basically you're a hand embroiderer then as well I do I do all of the above the only thing I have never been able to master is crochet hmm. I knit and I have sewn clothing I've done a lot of sewing but I cannot I start out one place and then it goes like this you know keeps on going that way yeah and I wish I knew how but I've never been able to master it yeah actually my grandmother taught me when I was very young how to crochet now I haven't done it in years but I used to do a lot of crochet but I could not knit she tried to show me how to oh, knit really and I just never Got it. So you see how that works. I out. think you're one or the other, perhaps. Yeah, I think you're right about that. You know, it's kind of like, are you a cat person or a dog person? Or uh -huh. you're your yes. crochet? But you've got a lot of experience then with sewing in that. Now, did you ever do sewing professionally? Like as in, did you do things for as a little business or? 
Well, right at this is the first time in my life, uh, two years ago, right in the midst of the pandemic, I made the decision that I had so many pieces of my work and I have gifted my children and others so many pieces that I felt I should start trying to uh, get these things out into the world where other people might be able to love them and appreciate. So I, right now I have an Etsy store. Oh, okay. It's Pat Jennings Art, all one word, and I am on Etsy. And I think right now I have 62 pieces listed. Wow. That's Some a are smaller things that I have made, but most are my bigger quilts. Yeah. I was just noting down Pat Jennings Art. I was going to put that in the show notes for this interview as well, so that some people, if they're interested in seeing some of your other creations or maybe purchasing some, they can go there and do that. Yeah, I know what you mean about acquiring an awful lot of things you make. And, you know, after a while, you run out of people to gift them to. So that's probably a good way to get them out in the world, you know. Plus, if anything, I'm bringing a little bit of income to cover your hobby you know which is that's good. But that was my goal is i don't seem to get enough of my making and my creating and i think that that has to do with my i know this is going to sound maybe a little bit woo woo but <laughs> i think that when i get in a certain zone it is very much a meditational experience for me and that in itself supports what i do the creative point, I think the creativity comes from within and therefore <clears throat> it has to touch on your spirit in some ways. So I look at it from I'm feeding my soul at times and I really am because it is a calling for me or I would have quit this a long time ago. I think you're very right about that. And I think that's what a lot of people had discovered during the pandemic as well. You know, mm -hmm. they were at home, alone, isolated in many cases, and they picked up uh, quilting or sewing or embroidery as a way to get through that difficult time. But right, to release their creative spirit, because I believe we all have one in us as well. We just need an opportunity to bring it forth. And uh, yeah, I agree with you. And I find that uh, when I'm in the zone, when I'm quilting away, I don't care what's going on in the rest of the world. I'm just immersed. And that is a form of relaxation. Um, it really is. It it replenishes me. It is like a, that zone I'm you're talking about. The hours go by and you don't even know it. Exactly. Yeah. Just, you know, you sit down, do something that you think is only going to take you a few minutes and you get immersed in it next minute. It's half a day is gone. I find yes. And I'm not complaining about that. No, I no. don't know about you. Well, you're probably a retired person too. So, you know, you can either sit in front of a television set and rot your whole life away as a retired person, or you can do something creative that you've got time to do now and just enjoy life, you know, especially if you've been working for like 40 years of your life or whatever. It's time to have a little good time, I think. Yes, so, that's so true. Yes. And talking about creative spirit and that kind of thing, I know you have a few things to show. So you sent me a few pictures. So I thought what I would do is I'd put these up on screen and maybe you can talk to each one of them. And I know you've got some other things that you would like to show as well. So we'll start with the items that you sent to me. And you should see this up on your screen right now, I think. And this is an exercise using hexagons and uh, white with the color wheel. And I am very much in love with K facets designs. And these are my K facet scraps that I use to come up with a hexagonal table topper. Yeah, it's it's great use of, of scraps, and I do love K-Facet as well. I mean, I haven't met too many people that don't like K-Facet, but I really like what you've done here. It's almost a type of log cabin in design on each of your hexes, the way you've got the, the white and then the prints off from it. So that is really, really pretty. And then the next picture... Uh, another one, but uh, in a oh, way. that's the other side. So you, oh. you know, one side you spill coffee on, so you just flip it over. Oh, that's 
that's really nice. So very versatile, right? It depends yes. on the mood, what side you want to show. So yeah, that's yes. really pretty. And now tell us about this lovely creation. Well, this was, a. I rarely buy patterns. I usually just kind of come up with things. This was a pattern I bought that I will I will call it a suggestion, okay? <laughs> because I did not stick to the pattern, but I love to work with round circles and this pattern appealed to me so much and it was so hard for me, but I finally got it together and I really like it. And it's just a portion of what the quilt was supposed to be, but right. I just winged it and this is what I came out with. Well, it's very modern. In, in yes. approach to it too. And yeah, I know what you mean about deviating from the pattern. It's just a recommendation. You know, you got to make it your own in one way, whether it's your fabric choices or your design choices, that kind of thing. Now I notice there's some quilting on this. It looks like you outlined the, uh, the squares on all of this. So did you do that? Obviously you must have done that on a domestic machine. I did. I do not have a long arm. I have a friend who does big pieces for me because I just cannot manage the weight of those big pieces. Yeah, I know what you mean. That's why I invested in a long arm because, well, I'm not a good free motion quilter, even with a long arm. So mine has a computer. I let it do the work. I'm into the technology. And then we have this. Tell us about this. This is one of my newer pieces. In fact, I've got it up on the wall right now. I'm, I'm looking at it from where I'm seated. Uh, this is uh, uh, called My Grandmother's Screen Door. And I adored her and I adored going to her house. And uh, she had hollyhocks every summer. And so it was really fun to do it. And as a nod to the traditional quilters, I decided to do the hollyhocks in hexagons. It, it, they're paper pieced. I mean, they're uh, English paper pieced. English paper piecing. Yeah, uh -huh. I've tried that. I don't have a lot of luck with it because I'm a bad hand sewer. I I can black. show you how, Steve, and make it easy if you well, ever my, really seriously want to do it. Well, my problem is I jab myself all the time. Well, that, that's part I'm, of the... <laughs> yeah, I kind of bleed on my thing. So yeah, I, I do. You know, I have to. I, you just get you a Band-Aid and go on. Yep, and go <laughs> on. So what I was going to say about this, though, this is a good example, I think, of an art quilt, really. That's so, what I'm most known for is yep. my art quilts. Um, I have been... Uh, kind of dubbed in the region I'm certainly not famous by any means but I've been kind of dubbed in the region region as an art quilter and I am a member of an art group and I my expertise I guess you would say is in the form of an art quilt although I paint also yeah well this is this is a fine example of of that kind of thing I have yet to get into true art quilts um but that is on my bucket list to do that kind of thing. Now, you mentioned before we started the, the interview that you had a few other things close by you'd like to show us. So if you'd like to I'll share. Do it in back of my head, I'll try to hold this in such a way where you can see it better. Yes. That's one of my favorite pieces. Can you see it, Stephen? Yes, we can see it. And can you tell us the technique you used for this? Oh, my gosh. Uh, that came out of a Katie Pasquini Massapist workshop that I did. I didn't make it in her workshop, but when I, I always make whatever they want you to make in the workshop. And then in order for me to feel like I really know what I'm doing, I come home and make my own thing. Mm -hmm. And so that turned out to be my own thing. And you... Um, well, the technique is, I have to go back and think, but you draw every petal and every piece uh, and then you piece that or you can, uh, well, I don't piece it, but you can uh, put it on, um, oh, that's. Muslim? Well, you can do, yes, you, you get a background of muslin or something and then you take the stuff that, um, the word leaves me, uh, Stephen. Let's see. What do you call that? Uh, not steam a seam, but that other stuff. Anyway, oh. something like steam a seam. And you yeah. can put that on the back of all your pieces and then steam a seam them all together. Then I go around them. And then with this particular piece, I did a, zig, a close zigzag. 
but I've learned something better to do since I made that piece. And that and is, I do a lot of buttonhole stuff, and I, to me, it's just prettier. Now, maybe on that piece, uh, the zigzag was the most effective, but I love to do that zigzag. Um, I just think it's just the stitches are so pretty on that zigzag and I've used that on the piece that I showed you before called my grandmother's screen door or I right. used a zigzag on all those flowers. So would you call this technique is this what they call collage? Quilting? Well uh, uh it it could be uh, collage often is stacking things on one another so yep. uh this piece is not as much a collage as the last piece we showed. Oh okay. Because I put things on top of other things. Um, this, both of these pieces that we've been talking about are based on hand dyed fabrics. Oh, okay. And I got into that about 10 or 12 years ago, and I have got yard after yard of hand dyed fabrics, and I'm trying my best to really use some of those things that I worked so hard and spent all that money to make. Yeah, right. So, uh, that, that is my focus. And, uh, <laughs> I'm using them as quick as I can, you know? <laughs> yes, I know. I mean, well, you know. How many yards can you do in a day, you know? Yeah, well, what's the expression? She or he who uh, dies with the most fabric wins. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> and I, I've got a pretty nice collection. In fact, I am very, very bad for keeping everything. Uh, I've moved two times in my recent life. And I've had to throw away or gift yardage that I did not think I would ever use. A lot of it was motif kind of things with right. strawberries on them and different things. They're sweet and all, but I don't really use them in my sewing. And so I've gifted a lot of that stuff, especially when I moved. I had to clear out some things. But I collect these scraps, and I'm having so much fun with them. The hexagon piece is an example of that. Yeah, yeah I like to use scraps when I need to, I call it a, a palette cleaner. Like I've just done a major project and that may have given me some trouble. And sometimes I just like to reach into the scrap box and just start sewing fabric together and see what comes out of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of my favorite quilts that I've created have come from that process, actually. So I love to do that. And uh, right now I have a little, I've gotten just a couple of blocks done, but I'm, I'm setting them together with black and white, tiny black and white polka dots. Hmm. In other words, I don't just put them together. I put them to the black and white polka dots and then sew those little groupings together. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Lots of yeah, that's the thing. That goes back to what we were saying before about your creative spirit. When you kick into that, it is fun. It is a lot of fun. It and is. Also, it feeds my soul. It yeah, does. You never know what the end result's going to be completely. And that's okay by me. I like the surprise mm -hmm. at the end. Um, so do, out of everything that you've ever made, do you have one item that stands out as your absolute favorite? That's a hard I do. I mean, I like each piece for its own sake, but I do have a piece in my living room that is my absolute favorite. And I can step in there and show it to you if you would sure. like for me to do that. Okay. Let's well, I'm going to take a little trip through my house okay. and I'm going to have to turn on uh, some lights so that you can see <laughs> it well enough. Yes, don't keep but it. It the is dark. one of my largest art quilts I've ever made. And it actually made the show in Houston and the one in Paducah. Oh, wow. So somebody else liked it besides me. Yeah. Isn't that nice? And let me turn these lights on in here. I didn't realize we'd come in here, <laughs> but let me turn around and let you see it. Oh, wow. That is stunning. That, that looks almost if if I wasn't a quilter and I saw that I'd say that's a painting until I got up closer to it it it, it is a uh very much like a painting with thread if you'll note the birds are almost all thread yeah I, I worked in a little fabric a little dark fabric in there to accentuate some of the feathers like here and here yeah. Yes, the, the, this in here is all thread paint, and I've never done anything like that before, and I just made it up. Oh, jeez! Um, 
I had some hand dyed brown fabric, ugly fabric. And I took that old fashioned starch and starched that stuff so you could hold it out about like you would a paper bag. Right. And that, and then I even under that, I even put more, uh, what do you call that? Stuff? I can't yes. Yeah. And then I just went crazy sewing. And after I finished what I thought I needed to do, I just carefully cut out everything out of that brown uh, brown fabric. And that's how I did. These are applique on, yeah. and uh, they're hand they are hand painted. I dipped those in paint. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That so that's is stunning. Piece. Thank you. And while I'm in here, I'll show you this piece. Yes. Uh, it is. So, this was so easy, but I I everybody likes this piece oh, also. Yeah. yeah. And a friend of mine gave me uh, this two dragons right and they were on quilt i mean on silk that was absolutely falling apart and she said you'll know what to do with these well at the time i didn't know what to do with them <laughs> but i came up with it and you see this little cute thing right there yeah that covers a hole oh <laughs> And I couldn't come, I couldn't get around that particular thing. So I just made a little medallion thing. So see, that's where your creativity comes yeah. in. Yeah, that and is. This, that's this really quilt good. has writing on it. This one says oneness, gratitude, recognition, uh, Thanksgiving. It's got a writing on everything. And I call it my meditation quilt. Yeah, I, well, that's a good name for it, but it is. Uh -huh. It is yeah. definitely also very, very attractive. And I can see why people really love that too, because there's so much going on in it too. When you you look at it, you know, you look at each of the different uh, squares in it and and then the words and yeah, that is beautiful piece. I've very never shown this. I don't think I've ever shown it in a, I think I've shown it in an exhibit before, an art exhibit, yeah. but never in a quilt exhibit before. Oh, this well, piece good. is uh, like a little kimono. Oh, yes, I see. Yep. Similar. And then the little shoes. And I made this for a feminist exhibit. Oh. To okay. show uh, what the name of it is, what is beauty and who decides. Oh. It's, because you remember yeah. they would wear those little shoes because yes. they were thought it was thought to make them more beautiful, yep. but it ruined their feet. Well, yes, it did. They used to so play. that's kind of a commemorative piece about that kind of grosses everybody out. Wait a minute. <laughs> While I'm in here, I'll show you one more thing and then yep. I won't bore you to death with uh, boring me. <laughs> this is another one of my absolute favorite ones. Can you see it? Yes. Yes. Oh, that's stunning. Is that, uh, uh -huh. is it applique? Yes. Wow, that must I applicate around everything. And I used a lot of metallic. If you know how to use that metallic, mm. it is so wonderful. And I use the metallic for, uh, with it in the bobbin as well as in the top. And my machine just doesn't mind it at all. It just go, eats it up. And this piece is called Tribal Spirit. It's very nice too. And I love the, you. that you've uh, put in the track lighting to show them off as well. Well, that was one of my biggest expenses when I moved here. I'm looking for the label. I usually label them on the right side back, but I don't see the label on that, but there's one back there somewhere. Okay. Yeah. I'm going in the other room now. Okay. Back to where we started. And as you're going into the other room, I'll ask you another question, which I think I know the answer to. Okay. But, uh, it, it is, what type of quilter would you describe yourself as? Traditional, modern, freeform, experimental, exploratory? All of the above. I was going to say, I would say definitely all of the above, but I think you lean towards the more um, art. Artful, uh, more yeah. artful, because I never, I would say I've never followed a pattern to the to the specs of the pattern fully ever i can't remember ever doing that yep. and i love the classic designs you know i some people uh, are snooty about well i only do do to do oh, well yeah. i don't you know i i like uh i like lots of things and uh I really respect our foremothers for developing, you know, America, the this North America 
is noted for the we developed the patchwork quilt yeah it's ours it's one of the few art forms or artisan forms that's attributed to north america that's that's very true that's very true and i just think that honoring our foremothers is so important they had no tools they they had a ruler and a pair of scissors and maybe some cardboard but way back when i'm not sure cardboard was available no no i think sometimes they just cut up old clothing and old pieces of fabric into squares and that and just hand sewed them all together to it was out of necessity that yeah. this art form was developed yes. and i just think that is uh why i love to do that and i also like to do handwork i know you don't but yeah. uh, i have a love for some handwork and every once in a while i just have to yeah you know. i mean i i don't hate it i just i need <laughs> i need to practice i need to well practice. i have a friend who says if you can't do it on machine i'm not interested and so uh, <laughs> i understand that yeah like i i shy away from it but um i have tried my hand at doing english paper piecing like hexes and i did do some and i should yeah. get back into it i haven't done much of it well i'll tell lately. you my secret is to have a little one of those um uh, i'll show you it's right here have one of these. Oh, yeah. Uh, I know what you do with little, that. You know, don't make a big old smear all over it, but just put one little thing in the center and stabilize that little piece of fabric so you're not having to chase it all over the place. Yep. And then, and you could even put this around the edges of it if that would help you. Yeah, that's and actually the, I, the secret to me is being able to stabilize that little son of a gun. Yeah, to keep it steady. Yeah. Well, yes. I've done that. I've used the glue technique because I saw that on oh, something. Good. And yeah, it, it that did work for me much better. It helps. Trying to base them and all that kind of stuff um, with it. So, so that takes me then to are you in your sewing area? No. Right now? Oh, I'm okay. in my Florida room. Oh, okay. I can take you in there if you want to see it. Well, I was just going to say maybe, well, we could take a look at it if it's not too much trouble. Or No, whatever. it's right here. Uh, I built this room on my house, and so I can, this is the back end of what was used to be my old house. Oh, okay. And so I have a, got a direct uh, view of my studio. Oh, that's nice. I don't have all the lights on. That's not good. That's okay. But it's set up the way it works best for me. Like my machine here in the corner, yeah. I have my ironing board and then my cutting table. And then back there is my threads. Yes. The farthest back is where I keep my threads. Yeah. And but it works. It works great for me. Yeah. Well, that's the important part about having a, a sewing area. You got to make it work for you too. So you do. Yeah. I'm a bad stacker. So stuff gets, <laughs> gets taller and taller, you know? Oh yeah, I do know. <laughs> With that, well, I've got. Uh, I always keep several projects going at the same time, and I don't mind that. It doesn't bother me a bit. No, I'm the same way because Good. sometimes you get a little bit tired of something you're you're working on, and uh -huh. it becomes a chore. If it becomes a chore. It's not any fun anymore. So I just if go to another not project. Fun, mm -mm. If it's not fun, I'm not interested. No, I'm working. I'm on 75 years old, and it's got to be fun. Yep. I want to show you something that has been fun for me. Yes, let's see. And I think a question you might ask me, let me see if I can turn on the lights. I didn't think I'd have this problem, but <laughs> I do. I can't find my light turner on her. Anyway, I'm going to try to show it to you without anything. I'm a member. I have a small group that meets here in uh, my little town. And we're just friends that have been for years and years, but we welcome new people. We are not a guild. We do not have any rules, no officers, no dues to pay, no treasury. We just come and enjoy sewing together. And we do that every Tuesday afternoon. Now, the other group that is a much more formal group uh, that I'm involved with is the Kentucky Heritage Quilt Society. Hmm. And it is a wonderful experience. Not only do you learn so much, but they give their members a lot. Like this, I'm participating in a mystery quilt right now. And these are all the different exercises that we've learned. Oh, all this yeah. stuff. 
I have no idea how it's supposed to go together. They haven't told me yet. That's the mystery. <laughs> right. And every Monday through the, my friend from Louisville, Mary has developed this and her, Mary Bauer and her, uh, her cohort, Kathy Wantlin, who is the techie, have put this all together for the members of, of our society. And it has just, I've never done it before, but it has been really, really fun. And I've learned so much. And yeah. so I was just wanting to say that they, our Kentucky Heritage Quilt Society offers like free classes sometimes, Zoom classes, uh, all kinds of retreats. I don't generally go to those I used to all the time, but I don't go to them anymore. I just can't be in a class for two or three days. I can't, I've got a condition called rheumatoid arthritis mm -hmm. and I had, that has to, well, it raises its ugly head from time to time. And I just right. don't want to go be gone that long, you know, yep. but uh, I just love being a member of that group. And my shirt today, the reason yep. I wore this is because it says Kentucky Heritage Quilt Society. Oh, and we even take people from Ohio or Tennessee, and we might even take somebody from Canada. Oh, well, <laughs> I think if, it might be if difficult anybody's for... interested in learning more about it, they can go yep. to khqs.org. Okay. And there's K lots of information. K-H-Q-S We've had members from all around. One lady came to one of our events every year from California. Oh. So she was dedicated to this group. And she didn't, I don't think she had any Kentucky other than our getaway group. And uh, so that was fun uh, to see that somebody wanted to be involved that much. So that there is a question I was going to ask later on, but I'm going to ask it now. So besides those two groups that you just mentioned to us, have you ever belonged to a guild or another? I have, and that's not my cup of tea. Yeah, I was just going to, I could hear it in your voice and you and I are of the same mindset. I belonged to one for a while and the same thing. It just didn't work out for me uh, with that. But what you're like, I like the more, the idea of you mentioned this group that you've been sewing with for years and you know you mentioned that you don't really have an executive you don't have any officers or anything like that uh it's just friends coming together and working and that's the kind of environment that i like the best you know there's no quilt police there's nobody with this attitude that oh if they see you doing something they go well that's not how i would do it you know as though mm, you know over no. i mean anything that will kill a creative spirit going back to that idea again is i think when someone is there and is lording over you about how you should do things i mean it's especially for beginner quilters you know they uh, are intimidated enough by you mm -hmm. know the whole thing you know and if you no know, my my idea is if you want to do this do it you'll learn as you go along You'll do what works for you and what makes you happy. You don't need somebody else telling you that this is right, this is wrong, or whatever. Like the rules of the road, there aren't any. Well, our our group kind of honors the thought that if someone asks you how to do something or someone asks you for your opinion, that's okay. Yeah. But just kind of off the cuff telling everybody what to do, that does kill. That kills the fun. It does. It does kill the fun. I mean, yeah, there's nothing wrong with you know, answering a question, if someone mm -hmm. knows something, sure, of course, mm -hmm. uh, with that. But, you know, to have the ones come in and look over your shoulder and go, uh-uh-uh, don't do that. Well, that has happened. Uh, that happens quite a bit. And I just, I, that's why my it's not my cup of tea to yeah. be involved with things like that. I want a supportive environment. I'm getting me some ice water. I'm dry as sure. I can be. <laughs> well, go ahead. I don't want you to dry out during this interview. That would not be a pretty sight. Uh. <laughs> So I'm going to go back to your sewing room in that. I saw your sewing machine. So what kind of sewing machine? And I imagine you have more than one. Uh, <laughs> what, what's your favorite? I'm down to two. Oh, and okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have a Bernina 440 that I use all the time. And I have a backup machine, a Bernina 660. Mm -hmm. And both of them are excellent machines. And I, I really love 
I really love the Bernina. Yep. Yep. Well, I know I hear that from a lot of people as I always like to kid people about it. Oh, you've drank the Kool-Aid for the Bernina. See, I'm well, that, that's <laughs> right. That's well, they've got some, uh, the pricing is ridiculous. You could buy a car for uh -huh. what they want for a sewing machine. I don't want that old, I don't want all that real I like the good, solid, basic stuff. I use a decorative stitch now and then. Uh, yeah. But no, for the most part, I don't use all that stuff. And I don't do machine embroidery either. I'm not interested. So, yeah. So you don't need to, all of that kind of stuff on it. And I know that they no. put all those buzzers and bells on. And it's just like anything that's high tech, right? You use about three things on it. The rest of them are there, but you paid for them, but you hardly ever go to them. So that's true, Stephen. That's it's true. very true. And, um, and you know, there's some good use machines on the market too. Yeah. Uh, people either no longer, you know, they thought they really wanted to get into it, but they really didn't. Yeah. And people die and have lots of beautiful supplies and machines left. Yeah, true. So if you're just going to get started in this, it, you, it, it rather than putting out a whole lot of money for this, if you're not sure, buy a used machine or a, yeah a, i would a, have it looked at by if it's a bernina machine i definitely would would try to get it evaluated by bernina tech yeah, before yeah. you put money even in a used model but uh, there's a lot of ways that you can uh before i had the bernina i had a sears and roebuck <laughs> kenmore yeah. and i wore it out yeah. thus and i also retired so thus, I took that as my gold watch when I retired yeah. and I wore it out. And so I think it was a 170. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it had many miles on it, I'm sure. So if you had all the money in the world, is there a piece of equipment that you'd like to invest in? Well, the equipment I would like is more and more and more space. It's hmm. ridiculous how much space I need, or at least it's. I don't know. It's, of course, if I built on a whole new room, hmm. it would be filled up yep. <laughs> in, less in a year and yeah. I'd be wanting more room. Yep. So I don't know. Maybe I'm just not using my room as, as wisely as I can. I have purchased recently some new shelves and uh, some new um, little drawer things, you know. Right. So yep. I haven't gotten that all set up yet, but that's one of my goals for the next week or so is to get in January, kind of starting off the year, getting a little more organization. Yeah. Yeah. I know you're right though. The more, the more space you have, the more you fill it up. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's a, it's an endless circle. You never can have enough space. Yes. Um, that's so true. Yep. Yeah. And I think uh, if you have any tendency towards being a pack rat and <laughs> fabric, I think a lot of us are pack rats. I know I am. You know, I love the question. I go into the quilt store, I buy fabric, and there's always somebody in the quilt store, like uh, the staff know not to ask me this question, but other you know, customers. And they go, oh, that's pretty. What are you going to do with it? And I'll go, I don't know. It's pretty. That's why I bought it. <laughs> I, mean, I don't have a plan at the moment. <laughs> look at you like, but shouldn't you have a plan? I go, no. <laughs> no. My plan is it'll look nice. The stuff up. I do, I just, you know, it comes to me somehow. And yep. I don't have plans for this stuff I've collected. I do know that I love the K facet. I'm getting into Tula Pink and Anna Maria Horner some mm -hmm. because I just love those animals she comes the tula comes up with oh my gosh uh she's got one with a snake on it now and i've tried to figure out how i can accept that because i love all the other stuff that's on it and yeah. then there's that snake so uh. <laughs> yeah i know well i would say then with the, with this the fabric you just mentioned, uh, the lines of fabric is that you probably tend towards the brighter colors. I do. Yeah, I do too. I love the bright colors. I do too. It makes me happy to sew yeah. on those. Yep. I did a, a, a piece not too long. I'm still working on it actually, of shirting uh, mm. for my grandson who's going to be going to college next year. And I'm putting applicating dogs on these, pla they're pla it's plaid shirting. And I just don't get the joy 
mm. from that like I do the bold colors. Yep, yep, exactly. I, I just love the bold colors. But, you know, I think some people are afraid to work with the bold colors. They And they tend towards the muted, you know, colors, the pastels and things like that. And I figure if you're going to do this, you know, go big and go bold <laughs> with it. Go big or go home. Yeah, That's exactly. It. Yeah, and I don't, you know, I look at my lot too, and I'm thinking, uh, if I like that, I better be getting it, and I better be doing it. If I, if that's something I really enjoy, then I need to go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Don't leave it for. I tomorrow. spend a lot of money on fabric that Definitely. I probably will never use. <laughs> Me too. Yep, it's a, it's a thing. <laughs> we well, I don't buy. I don't. You know, there's so many things that I don't buy, yep. and uh, I feel yeah, you know, that's how I rationalize but, this. Yeah, you know, I we know. have to have some kind of a. Yeah. I always tell people, though, we don't need to rationalize it. If we want it, we get it. You know, it's not a question. Well, we're far me. enough along. Most of us are far enough along that, you know, I say, you know, and sort of, we, my friend and I laugh about it. If you're going to get a tree, get the big one. Get the big one. <laughs> get the big one. Oh, true, true. <laughs> I, like, I like that idea. So, yeah. Where do you get your supplies? Do you do a lot of online? Uh, well, we or? have a really sweet local shop, the little Berea quilt shop. And I go there when I can. She carries a line of Moda. So I really like Moda's grunge. Right. Uh, it seems to go with so many things. Right. And I like that. But her uh, her line of fabric is more for uh, more of the small prints and things like that, that a lot of people enjoy. Yeah. Uh, not my cup of tea in a way. But I buy from, I think my favorite online shop is my favorite quilt store out oh. of Texas. Oh, okay. I've not heard of that one. Well, they have a really nice line. And if you buy $100, your shipping is free. And their pricing is as good as anybody's. I buy from Missouri. Mm -hmm. uh, star yeah uh, the only thing i have a problem with with them is their shipping takes so long yeah um, even in the states their shipping uh, they i think what they do is they house out the shipping department so mm -hmm. the fabrics cut then it goes to a shipping department elsewhere perhaps yeah and then it's shipped and so yeah i have so, found, I know, that's the only thing i have that i don't like about them um, well, I have found with Missouri Star Quilt, they have gotten a little better, at least for shipping here to Canada, because I ordered from them back several years ago when I first got into quilting, and it went around the world, I swear. It it, it actually went to Sweden, uh, oh. my order, and came back. And I, I called them up, I emailed them and said, you know, then this is yes we know and we're not happy about that and uh, you're not the first one to tell us that and we're working on it and they truly oh did my now, word. their shipping now is much faster to canada and oh, i'm good good and, and well i know that when i order from texas the the my favorite uh, quilt store in texas i get it in four or five days and if I order from Missouri, it might take as much as two weeks. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, hey, big deal. What am I going to do? You know, I've got plenty of stuff to do to wait for it. So I'm just really that's picking, true. I'm being picky right now. Well, I think that's the key to it, too, when you're ordering stuff online. You don't be in a rush, no matter where you're ordering it from. If it comes quicker than that, you're happy. But don't be sitting there going, well, I need this like tomorrow because, that's not going to happen probably in a lot mm. of cases. So no, yeah. it's not. It is not. Uh, I would rather uh, support my local uh, quilt shop anyway. And I do. And like, if I need some basics like black, which I use a lot, mm. I'll just buy a bolt yeah. you know, at a time. So when I shop with her, uh, she appreciates it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I do the same thing for basic ones. I'll buy a bolt uh -huh. it as well. So the same thing. Yeah. So, um that, uh, Stephen, I think you and I think a lot alike on this stuff. It sounds like it. <laughs> so far, we haven't come to loggerheads, so that's a good. I know, I know. We don't need to make this into theater, so. No, no, no. Oh, so I can get dramatic, and I'm sure you can too. Oh yeah, believe me, I can. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
Do you have any favorite experts or sources of information you might to turn to? I love, I tell you, I don't go to Pinterest a lot because I get so overstimulated. Oh, yes, I know. But every once in a while, I would like to see what Pinterest is doing. And I've got ideas from Pinterest. I try not to copy it just straight out, but I do get ideas from them. And I saw the, uh, what is her name? T uh, is it Terry Rowland? Oh, yes, Terry Rowland. the little blocks. Yes. Well, I I give her credit, and I will give her credit on the label of my quilt, but I tried that, and it's wonderful for scraps. Yeah. Uh, and I did the value study from dark to light, then back up to medium and dark, and I really enjoyed it, and it turned out pretty good. Yeah, I want to try that. I, I did interview Terry. She was on. I saw that. Uh, I saw it. I watch your interviews and I often watch your other programs and I'm just now getting on to the chat group and also the sit and sew, which I came to and enjoyed it very much. Oh, I'm glad uh, you I love the other women and what they had to say about their, their projects they're yeah. working on. It's a great group. That's actually called, I call it chat, uh, craft and chat. Um, my husband calls it crap and chat. <laughs> Well, get <laughs> some of that too. You get some of that, but I always learn something from that group of people that come. You know. Well, the other day I I checked in for a little while and I learned three places to buy things that I had never heard of before. Yep. I never heard of YWAC or Waywack. Yep. Never yep. heard yep. of that. Yep. I never heard of the Three Sisters. Never heard of that. And there was one other that I wrote down. I can't remember what it was. Might have been the but, uh, dog I, I have yet to check them out, but I'm going to check them out when I get time. Yeah, I make the joke all the time that they're all enablers because every time I'm on uh, Craft and Chat, I end up buying something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I have, I actually have to say that I have bought all the things that I'm interested in buying at this time. Uh, some of my favorite supplies that I learned about recently is that Aurifil thread. Oh, yes. I've been using just plain cotton. And there was a day about a month or two ago, I, I, my machine, my thread would break all the time. And I had a spool of that Aurifil and I put that in there. It hasn't broken maybe once or twice in the last six weeks. It's a good and product. Oh, my word. It's so good. So Sandy Claus <laughs> brought me about eight or 10. I always get several uh, <laughs> spools. So that ought to hold me. And most of them are that pearl gray yeah, that yeah. does That's a lot, you know. Yeah. And the other thing that a friend of mine made me is a uh, what she calls a clapper. Have you ever used yes. this? Yes, I have. I have a couple of them, actually, and I, I do use it. Well, my friend Eddie Shute made this. He's a woodworker, and his wife, Mary Ann, brought this to me. I didn't know what the heck it was, so I was ashamed to tell that I didn't know. And I finally <laughs> asked Mary Ann, what do I do with that? And she explained. She a, was a costumer. She's retired right. now. But she was a costumer, and so she used this kind of stuff all the time. So when, maybe others won't know, so I'll say, okay, yeah. or do you want to explain it? No, no, you go ahead. Well, especially on uh, hard-to-press seams, you get that good and hot with your iron, and then you clap that down on top of it. And for some reason, that holds that heat and presses that piece out so much better. And yep. I just, ever since I learned what it is, I really liked it because it works for me. Yep. And I, I rarely do precision piecing, but I am now. And another thing that I just love, and I got, it was a Christmas present. <laughs> It's a little embroidery. Can you hold it up a little it, higher? It's uh, oh, that's pretty. That's it pretty, and it is a, a repro of vintage tools. Yeah. I I do embroider some, but I will use this for all of my sewing. But you get, and it's just so beautiful. Yeah, I just don't is. even know if I'll ever use it. But yeah. there's like a little needle case. It's got a little chain on it, and. Uh, a beautiful little thimble 
Anyway, I got Santa Claus brought it, and I thought it was such a sweet thing. Actually, my friend Patricia gave it to me. But I think that is a lovely little gift, and I think any soul would probably appreciate it. Yes, I think so. And, you know, it's nice to have nice-looking things as your tools as well, because I think it inspires you, you know, as well. So For yeah. sure. And it looks nice, too, if you put it out on display in your sewing room as well. And if, you know, you might be working at something, but, you know, it catches your eye, you look at it, mm. it brings you happiness. It brings it you does. joy. It does. You know? I'm so, all for this bringing joy in my life. Yep. Well, Stephen, what else do you want to talk well, ask me about? I know that you mentioned in one of your emails to me that you've been thinking about having your own YouTube channel. So have you given that some more thought? Well, I'm not much of a techie. I think I can make a video and post it. Is that what you do? That's what you do. That's the basics. <laughs> yeah. Well, I also would be very concerned that I would have enough content, you know, for something like that. So I think just as doing that Etsy shop, mm -hmm. I had to kind of really work at that to get my mind wrapped around it. Right. But I might just do that because I've done some other little short vid videos on gratitude yeah. and people seem to like that a lot. So well, I, going I to can say, incorporate gratitude yeah. in with the things I'm working on. I was going to say too, you know, you have, you already showed us some of the, your beautiful quilts that you've got hanging up in your home. You know, you could start with doing a little chat you know, talking a little bit more in detail about your process when you made a particular piece. Because okay. people are really interested in that, you know, because they find that inspiring. And also, and I'm sure as you did that, you would be giving them some tips and tricks along the way too that would just naturally come from that. You know, you start small and you work your way up as long as you enjoy doing it, you know? Well, that would be, uh, that would be it. And uh, some days I don't really want it. I mean, I'd like to wear my pajamas all yep. day. Thank you very much. And so I would have to, uh, I would have to uh, figure out what works best for me. But you've got some great tips. Thank you very much. Oh well, yeah, they come as I from my experience. That's all. Just okay. as I work. well, that's who I need to talk to is yeah. people like you. Yeah. Well, anyways, do you have any other challenges or goals? in the for the future yeah oh one thing i think might might please others to know is that over the years i have accumulated what i call orphan blocks oh yes <laughs> do you have any of those oh yes i do <laughs> so for some reason they didn't work in or i made too many or yep. it was my what i wanted well i've got a drawer full of that stuff and I've been, as I go through and organize, I've been putting it all together and I'm going to make a quilt out of my orphan blocks. Yep. That's a great idea. Won't that I, be I, fun? It is. It is fun. It might be yeah. ugly as sin, but it'll be fun. Actually, that's what I thought too. And then I don't know where it was or where I heard it, but someone was talking about these orphan blocks. And that was a few years ago when I first got started in this. And, uh, I decided one day so I got this box basically full of these things. Their colors don't really go together. They're not the right size and everything. I just started sewing and started fitting them together. And yeah. one of my, it's one of my favorite quilts that I made out of that. Oh, I'm so glad to hear you yep. say that because I was thinking, oh gosh, this is going to be atrocious. But I think fun. I've got enough for two. Yep. And it was fun. Pretty good size. Yeah. It was fun to do that. And you just don't get too, at least I didn't, I didn't get too hung up on, you know, does this color go with this color? I just, I just went with it. And if it, well, it's easy to border around smaller pieces and make oh, yeah. them match up. Yeah. So that would be fun. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot for telling me about that. Yeah, you'll be surprised at what the end result's going to look like. It's sort of like a. <laughs> Cool. I'll show you. you know? I'll show you when I finish. Okay. Yeah, I do so. Um, one other before we we leave, I'd like to know, know. Do you have any advice for anybody who wants to get started into doing what you do, what we do? Well, I think just kind of knowing the principles of art, which my 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 quilting feeds my painting and my painting feeds my quilting because I would say to a new quilter, I would take a class if that depending on what they want to do. 
You know, right, right. I would take a beginner class in what they really would like to do. If it's a classic pattern, then there are a lot of great teachers out there. And then I would study values. If you don't have light, medium, and dark, I don't care what you're doing, painting, de decorating your room or whatever. If you don't have those three elements, you are not going to be happy. No. And the value shifts really can change it from a blah to a wow. And so that's what I would say to new quilters. And I would say, you know, don't expect uh, excellence the first try. Be, be kind to yourself and, and just be free with it and allow yourself to make something that's not all that pretty. I don't show you my ugly things. I throw <laughs> those away uh, or chop them up. <laughs> yeah, well, there's that too, right? You can <laughs> cut them. It's only fabric and thread, you know? It's, you're, that's you're not exactly solving right. world you hunger. Or, yeah, you're not solving world hunger. You're not having, a, you're not creating a cure for cancer here. It's just for fun. Let yourself go. And whatever you create, you know, it, it's something that's unique to your personality and you don't have to put it on public display for everything. You just do it for yourself. So, yeah. So is there any that's a great idea? To, you know, that's a great thing to tell new quilters is so yeah. don't <clears throat> they expect so much out of themselves. You know, they yeah. expect to make it like so and so does. Well, you're never going to make it like so and so does because you're you. Yeah. Yeah. You got to like, I hear it from the ladies at my quilt store. Uh, you know, someone will come in and say they want to make that quilt that's on display. And it may have been up there for a couple of years and the fabric doesn't exist anymore, but they want to make it exactly like that. And they want those exact same fabrics in the whole bit. And you go, well, you can't get those. So, but you could make it out of other things, but they seem to, you know, they, they can't make that shift yeah, yet. They can't yeah. get out of the box. You know, they got to get out of the box. That's sort of it. Thing. That's it. And that's the truth of the art. I thought I never would yeah. get from a classic piece or to an art quilter. It took a real flip yeah. for me. And I worked at it long and hard. And it didn't come naturally because I was a kid that where you colored in the lines or you got mm -hmm. it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, make that flip. And I think it's easier for the younger ones. Yeah, in some ways, I think it is because there's more opportunity for yeah. it, you know? especially now in the education system and things like that, where teachers are trained to let kids explore their talents. Not like if they want to paint the sky green and the grass blue, that's their choice. Yeah. You know, it's not going to really end the world by doing that kind of a thing you know in my day in school teachers said no 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 sky's blue grass is green yes and that kills creativity and having been a, a teacher i kind of understand all of that and, and i can tell you were a teacher yes. oh yeah yeah for many years but anyways this has been really great um i know when this goes up people are going to be there's going to be a lot of very positive comments about it because you gave us so much. You gave us a well, that's so sweet of you. And you're so good at interviewing. I've enjoyed you and getting to know you a little better, Stephen. Yeah. Well, I've enjoyed this very much. And so um, any final thoughts before uh, I say goodbye? Just say, keep on keeping on. Yep. Then that's a great advice. Do what you'd love. Don't waste your time doing stuff you don't like. Exactly. Exactly. I, agree with that wholeheartedly well thank you so much pat for this um this was great and just stay on the line here after i've said goodbye to you um but thank you again for this and i hope you enjoy the rest of your day so thanks again. i will thank you